Tam Joseph was born in the Caribbean island of Dominica in 1947. In 1955, at age seven, he immigrated to the United Kingdom, where he went on to study at the Central School of Art, the Slade School of Fine Art, and the London College of Printing. While in London, Tam Joseph worked with black community organizations, the Black House, Keskiti Center, and Harambe. The Black Arts Movement hit England in the 1980s after its peak had passed in the United States and it would have a transformative impact on the work of black artists in the UK as well as British culture as a whole. At the time, conservatives under Margaret Thatcher gained power in England and the movement was a response to the tense social and political landscape by artists who urgently felt the need to create a visible, vibrant presence. All day following an incident last night involving police and black youths. At about five o'clock this evening, it came to a head. The drive to create art that spoke to and produced meaning about the lived experiences of blacks in Britain led to works that necessarily confronted the repressive, dominating power structures of society. But tell the cops I can't touch this I don't trust this When they try to rush I bust this That's the sound number two You say it ain't cool But mama didn't raise no fool And as long as I stay black I gotta stay strapped And I never get to lay back Cause I always gotta worry about the pay in addition to African-American artists who had long been active in the black arts movement, Tam Joseph was surrounded by the work of contemporaries such as Eddie Chambers and Donald Rodney. The work utilizes Egyptian hieroglyphic imagery in combination with action verbs. The images range from two human figures, one nude, the other clothed in Egyptian style dress, a snake consuming another snake, an X symbol, a tumbling figure with chained feet, two crocodile figures eating the same prey, two hands, and a woman in a traditional African dress carrying a child. The corresponding words are crawl, step, strides, stumble, fall, stance, and march respectively. Below the words are a set of footprints leading from a hand mark. The piece narrativizes the history of the African diaspora through a parallel analogy of an individual learning to walk. The use of sand as a painting material immediately ties the work to an African geospatial location signified by the Egyptian style characters. The sand signals a connection to a homeland, to nature, and to a common heritage. It also complements the theme of movement in the words, evoking travels to distant shores and emphasizing the diasporic experience. The handprint marks the beginning of the movement, summoning the image of one pushing off from the ground, of human life rising from nature itself. The corresponding word, crawl, is associated with babies, which allows one to think of the first figure, a nude black woman, as an E figure, a mother. The next figure signifies more specifically as Egyptian and is accompanied by the word step, which pays homage to the rich history of the civilization on the African continent. The stylized figures recognize and act as reclamation of the influence that African art has had on the diaspora, as well as the rest of the art world, including modernism, the latter being a history that is not always told or valued. The next symbol, a snake eating another snake or similar animal, represents to me a position of strength, 
reinforced by the word strides. The fourth symbol, an X, signs the conquering of African peoples by Western Europeans under capitalism and imperialism, marking them as a target for the expansion of empire. Its word is stumble. It is closely tied to the symbol following, a figure with shackled feet falling. The history of enslavement and the subsequent physical displacement is the catalyst for the diaspora. I notice that the footprints under these symbols and words do not show signs of their counterparts' disrupted movement. This can be read as a testament to the strength and perseverance of enslaved ancestors and highlights the unceasing forward motion of time. The last symbol in the sequence is reminiscent of the West African Adinkra symbol, Denkeyem Funefu, which is a symbol of democracy and unity. The crocodiles share a stomach but fight over food to their detriment. This symbol represents unity and democracy by warning against the perils of division. In this sense, the inclusion of this symbol signifies the long social reality of racial division and domination, even as imperialist nations espouse values of democracy and freedom. Yet, its association with the word stance signs a rejection of the polygenetic argument and false scientific reasoning that contributed to white supremacist institutions. Further, it recognizes the subject position of Africans, African-descended peoples, and allies as enlightened witnesses and activists in the push for freedom, democracy, and civil rights. The next two symbols are separated from the others by a thin line, representing a jump to more recent history and the present. The first is a pair of hands. Beneath them is the word march, which connects the image to hands joining together for the marches of the civil rights movement. Yet, these hands are also arranged in a way that they can be from one person as though looking through a window. To me, this is a sign for the importance of connecting with your past, your culture, and also looking inside yourself and loving blackness as the catalyst for political change. This connects the physicality of the sand to the idea of shared knowledge and muscle memory in the diaspora. This ties in with the teachings and values of the black arts movement as well. The last figure of a woman in traditional dress with a baby is not accompanied by any word. This is important because it signifies the future which is yet to be written. There is creative potential for the people of the diaspora which, by exercising agency, can lead to transformation for it and the world. Mm -hmm.